In this video, we're going to talk about how to get started in politics. Truthfully, it is easy as one, two, three. Please listen to what I'm going to share with you because I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step process to get it done that will jumpstart your career in politics. Oh, and stick with me because I got a free gift at the end. We're going to do a deep dive into four different things here. How to be well informed, how to find volunteers, how to become an expert in certain subjects, and how to give a great speech. All of this is important to what you want to do. Stick with me. And let's start with the importance of being informed. You're asking when you run for office, or you will be, to have power over the way people live. And sure, it's about service and being responsive to constituents and people in your jurisdiction, but with every elected office in the land comes a certain amount of power that affects the way people live their lives, the taxes they pay, the services they get. And voters are kind of choosy if they get the idea that you're clueless or some sort of clown, it's kind of the end of your campaign. So you need to make it a daily habit to be informed and to have understanding of this process that you are active in. It also pays dividends because as you meet people who could be helpful to you, the better informed and on top of things that you are, the more likely it is that you will make a good first impression. Now, how do you do that? Well, if you're running for public office, uh, you really ought to have some idea of what's going on in the world or a major war that's been launched or some catastrophe that happened. If you should know something about what's going on in your country, if there was some calamity in the nation's capital that was major news, you should be looking at your statewide newspaper so that you can follow what's going on in your state. And you should also be checking stuff in your community. Now, my preference to learn that is newspapers, but you can learn it other ways. But the point is, if you are not well informed and somebody asks you something that happened the day before that everybody's talking about and you say, what are you talking about? It does not make a good impression. Now, you can supplement that with books about famous people. And one that I would highly recommend that you read at the get-go is something called The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Here's the truth about politics. It is civilized warfare. And a lot of the lessons that Sun Tzu wrote about centuries ago are still pertinent to this day. In fact, I gave a lecture at West Point a few years ago, and I noticed that every cadet there had their own copy of The Art of War by Sun Tzu. It is a required textbook at West Point. There are five kinds of people who care passionately, who hold what office in your community or jurisdiction. And it's incumbent upon you, if you want to get involved in politics, that you meet some of these people. The first one is you probably have a chosen political party or a political party that you're registered in. One group of influencers that has a stake in who is running for what office in your community or the political party leaders involved with your party. That is a group you need to introduce yourself to, and it wouldn't hurt you to show up to some of your political party meetings. There's a second group of people in that that have influence over who gets started in politics. And those are the elected officials of your party who already hold positions of power. You need to be on a first name basis with them. You need to introduce yourself and say hello or go to events where you can rub shoulders with them. There are civic and community leaders in every community who have an outsized influence on political discourse and in their Rolodex they have a lot of names of other influential people and they could be the head of civic and community organizations, they could be on the board of United Way, they could be on the board of the Chamber of Commerce, they may be the heads of cause-driven groups, but those are people that you need to rub shoulders with if you're serious about getting a start in politics. 
six. There are two other things here I will mention. There are certain special interest groups that take an outsized interest in who holds what office in a community. And there are certain ethnic group leaders who also care deeply and passionately. Here's the thing about doing this in politics is it is a small club when you're just starting out. And who you know is far more important than the number of people you know. And if the who you know includes people who can help you, help you introduce you to somebody else or get you a campaign contribution, your chances of starting a political career are greatly enhanced. I mentioned something about becoming an expert on a topic. During the course of your review of newspapers, well, newspapers cover problems. That's what sells newspapers is this calamity happened here, this happened there, this group is underserved, this person suffered a tragedy, here's an example of an injustice. As you read those newspapers, you should come up with a list of problems that you would like to fix and you should run for an office that gives you the power to fix those. But you need to know more than just the name of the problem. If you're really passionate, say, about ending the homeless problem in your community, you should become an expert on how to fix that problem. If you're really passionate about lifting a group of people that have been marginalized or lifting a group of people that live in an impoverished area. You should be able to talk knowledgeably about how you are going to fix that problem. Because inevitably, as you walk around and you talk to people in your network and you start talking about the problems you're going to fix, they are necessarily going to, at some point, say to you, how are you going to do that? And you need to have an answer for them, and that's why it's incumbent upon you to figure out the how-tos of what you're going to fix. The fifth thing I'm going to mention here is something that every political candidate has to do, and you might as well learn how to do it now. You're going to have to talk in public. You're going to have to stand on stage and give remarks to people. You may not have a podium, you may not even have any place for notes. You're just going to be able to be told to stand on stage and talk for a few minutes. You'll be going to multiple events and with no notice, somebody's going to say to you, Hey, hey Jay, come up and say a few words. And you can't walk up there and be clueless and have no idea what to say or stumble all over yourself and say, I'm so embarrassed I've never spoken before. Your words are the most powerful weapon in your possession. It is your words that make people passionate about you, passionate about your vision. It is your words that you can use to change the way they feel, change the way they behave. It is your words that are the magnet for your candidacy. Learn how to use them well. If you have to hire a speech coach to do that, it is worth the investment because public speaking is something every political candidate has to do. It's time you learn how to do it now because the better speaker you are, the quicker you'll be running for an office and winning an election. In the link underneath this video, I have a free gift for you. Fatal Mistakes candidates make and how you can avoid them. It's a free book. Click on the link and download it and read it because if you do, you will see what other candidates did that they should not have done so and make sure that you avoid the mistakes that they made.